algebra students, um, you should have out your unit 11 packet. We're going to be dealing with the day three notes. Um, the last couple videos have dealt with doing different multipl multiplying and simplifying of radicals. Um, and today is just going to be a recap. So we're not really doing anything new today. Um, but we are going to review because in a couple days you have your quiz. Um, and the quiz will cover all of the stuff that we're about to cover in the note sheet. So let's get started. Um, so it says here the quiz is tomorrow. It's not tomorrow. It's in a couple days. So don't worry about that. Um, the first part, just perfect squares. So not too bad. As long as you know your perfect squares, you don't have to do a factor tree. So square root of 64 is 8 because 8 times 8 is 64. Multiply it out. You get 16. For this one, you've got 2 times the square root of 9 is 3. And 2 times 3 will be 6. Square root of 4 is 2. Times it by 3, you get 6. And then there's a multiplication sign in between. 6 times 6 is 36. Square root of 100 is 10. And we're multiplying by 5, giving us 50. Um, this one, square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 4 is 2. And then you multiply the negative 3 and 7, you get negative 21 over 2. And you can leave it like that or write it as a decimal, but I think this is fine. This one, remember, you can't square root a negative, so that's going to be undefined. Um, this one, you got 1 third times the square root of 81. Square root of 81 is 9. 1 third times 9, you can use your calculator if you need to, you get 3. This one, 5 halves times the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Multiply it out. Use your calculator if needed, you get 5. This one, you deal with the negative later, square root of 36 is 6, and you multiply it by the negative, so it's negative 6. Perfect squares are pretty nice and easy. Make sure you know how to do factor trees for those numbers that are not perfect squares. So 120, you could do like 12 times 10. 12, you could do 3 times 4. 4 could break down to 2 times 2. 10 breaks down to 2 times 5. Remember, you want to circle your pairs and underline any leftovers. Only doing that with the prime numbers, not numbers like 4 or 12 or 10. For each pair, you write the number down once. That goes on the outside. For each leftover, that goes under the radical. So you have a 2, you have a 3, and you have a 5. 2 times 3 times 5, when you multiply those together, you get 30. All right, pairs go on the outside. Leftovers stay under the radical. 40, you can do 4 times 10, 2 times 2, 2 times 5. Um, we've got a pair of 2s, a leftover 2, and a leftover 5. Pairs go on the outside, leftovers stay under, 2 times 5 will give us 10. So 2 root 10. I'm going to skip number 3. Um, there's going to be times where you have to do simplifying not only numbers, but uh, variables under the radical as well. With the variables, remember you're trying to find the number of pairs. So think about it this way. If you have 11 x's and you're figuring out how many pairs that would be, there would be 5 pairs and 1 left over. 5 pairs would be 10 and then 1 additional would make 11. 5 pairs, let me turn that off, 5 pairs would end up being on the outside, so 5 becomes your new exponent, and the 1 left over stays under the radical. Then for the y, same thing, if you have an even amount, there won't be any leftovers. 4 divided by 2, you'll have 2 pairs and no leftovers. Nothing needs to be under the radical. All right, any um, leftovers all go under the same radical. There shouldn't be like more than one radical, and any pairs go outside. For this one, square root of 4, you don't need to do a factor tree for that. Square root of 4 is just 2. For 3 a's, 3 divided by 2, that would be 1 pair, the 1 is optional, and 1 left over. The left over can stay under the radical. For b, 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4, no left overs, so no b's are left under the radical. For 9, divide by 2, you'll get 4, that makes 8, and then there's 1 left over. All right, so everything kind of either goes all out in front together or all under the one radical together. This one you would have to do a factor tree first. So 15 can break down to 3 times 5, 10 breaks down to 5 times 2. You have a pair of 5s, a leftover 2, and a leftover 3. Pairs go on the outside, leftovers go under the radical. A, 19 divided by 2, you'll have 9 pairs and one pair left over. 
or one A left over, not one pair. For 170, divide that by 2, you're going to get 85. You can use your calculator if you need to. No leftovers. 36 divided by 2, you're going to get 18 pairs. Um, so the only thing that I really need to do is simplify the 3 times 2 under the radical, um, giving me 6A under the radical. But otherwise, everything else stays the same. All right, and then we had some multiplying. Remember that any radical times itself will be the number under the radical without the square root. So square root of 8 times square root of 8 is just 8, no radical. Square root of 6 times square root of 6 is 6. There's still a 2 out in front. 2 times 6 gives me 12. Square root of 12 times square root of 12 is 12. All right, you could multiply the 12 times 12, but it's just an extra step that you don't need. For this one, um, we don't have the same number under the radical, so we're going to have to multiply them. And then we multiply the numbers outside the radical as well. So 2 times 10 gives you 20. All right, 18 times 6, you can use your calculator if you need to. Um, you're going to end up with 108. And then you have to simplify it. Always remember to simplify and do your factor trees if you can. So like this one, you can even break it down to 18 times 6 if you want, because we know those multiply. Um, 18, you could break that down to, you know, 2 times 9. And 6 breaks down to 3 times 2. All right. And then you can kind of circle your pairs. We've got a pair of threes. We do have a pair of twos. They're just really far away from each other. And a leftover three. So the pairs are going to go on the outside. So the pair of twos, the pair of threes, the 20 was already out in front. And then we have the leftover three under the radical. Two times three is six times 20 is 120 root three. All right. Um, for the next one, you could multiply 4 times 6 and 5 times 9. So you could, if you wanted to, do 45 root 24 and then do your factor tree. There is a shortcut though if you notice 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2. So we really have 5 times 2 which is 10. And then that saves you from having to do a factor tree. If you wanted to do a factor tree you'll still get the same answer. 10 and 9 can be multiplied because they're both not under the radical and then root 6 just kind of gets carried on next to it. Um, for these ones, same thing. You're going to multiply and do your factor tree. Um, I'm going to move on just because we have a few more problems down here. Um, by the way, if 27 times 8, you don't even know what that is, maybe you don't have a calculator on hand, what you can do um, is you can just start doing your factor tree right away. So you could do like 6 times 7 is 42. Um, and then we just we know it's 27 times 8, whatever that is, and you could do your factor tree right away. Um, otherwise, just multiply it together. So you get 42 root, and then 27 times 8 is um, 6, carry the 5, you're going to get 216. And then you can just use the 27 and the 8 and break it down from there. Um, so 3 times 9, 9 breaks down to 3 times 3. And then you got a bunch of twos here with the eight. So you got a pair of twos, a pair of threes, a leftover two, and a leftover three. The pairs are going to go outside with the 42. So we got 42 times two times three. And then the leftover two and the leftover three stay under the radical. Um, you're going to end up with 252 root six once you multiply the 42 times two times three. Um, and then two times three under the radical is six. Okay. Um, and then we have some multiplying with like the parentheses. The main thing with these is be careful what is actually included in the parentheses. What's being squared? Whatever is being squared has to be written down twice because it's being squared. So this means 4 root 3 times 4 root 3. 4 times 4 is 16. Root 3 times root 3, remember any radical times itself is that number without the radical. So root 3 times root 3 is 3. And then you can multiply those together and you get 48. This one, you're going to do negative 2 root 7 times negative 2 root 7. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Root 7 times root 7 is 7. And then you get 28 for your answer. This one, the only thing being squared is root 3. So only root 3 gets written twice. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. And then we still have it being multiplied by 2. All right, don't forget about the 2. And you get 6. This one, same thing, root 3 is the only thing being squared. 
So when you multiply root 3 times root 3, you get 3. There's still a negative 2 out there. When you multiply that, you get negative 6. This one, you're going to do 4 root 2 times 4 root 2. 4 times 4 is 16. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. And you multiply those together and you get 32. Um, this one, you're going to do negative 4 root 2 times negative 4 root 2. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Multiply those together and you get 32. All right. And then we have a few with the variables as well. So let's see. We've got 2 square root of 6x squared times the square root of 15x cubed. You're going to multiply what's outside. So the only thing outside the second radical is a 1. Um, 2 times 1, you're going to get 2. 6 times 15, you're going to get 90. And then x squared times x to the third, remember that you add the exponents, you'll get x to the fifth. From here, you're going to need to do a factor tree. So you can use 9 times 10, um, 3 times 3, 2 times 5. So we have a pair of 3's, a leftover 2, and a leftover 5. The pair is going to go out front with the 2. And then the leftover 2 and the 5 go under the radical. The x to the fifth, see how many pairs there are. 5 divided by 2, or, yeah, 5 divided by 2 is 2, and there's 1 left over. This becomes 6x squared, and underneath becomes 10x. All right, um, let's see, which one do I want to do? Let's look at this one. For number 8, when you do this, you you can multiply what's underneath the radical. So technically there's a 1 here. 4 times 1 is 4. It's a perfect square, so we'll square root that in a second. a to the first times a to the first is a to the second. Remember, you add your exponents. b to the fourth times b to the fifth is b to the ninth. Square root of 4 is 2, so I don't need to do a factor tree. a squared, 2 divided by 2, there's going to be one pair. The 1 is optional. 9 divided by 2, there's going to be 4 pairs and 1 left over. And the 1 left over stays under the radical. All right, um, for this next one, negative times a negative is a positive. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just going to be, you could, if you want to multiply those together, you could say 25. x to the 93rd times x to the 5th, you can add those together. You get x to the 98th. But square root of 25 is 5, so if you wanted to go straight to just 5, you could. 98 divided by 2, you're going to get 49. All right, and there's no other leftovers. These guys, if you see area problems on your homework, it just means you're multiplying them together. So like for number 1, you would do 5 root 2 times 5 root 2. Multiply the 5s, you get 25. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Multiply 25 and 2, you get 50. Um... So kind of the same idea for number 2, except you'll have to do a factor tree. 10 times 3, well, you're going to do 10 root 2 times 3 root 10. 10 times 3 is 30. 2 times 10 is 20. And then you can do your factor tree. All right, you get a pair of 2s and a leftover 5. Pairs are going to go out front with the 30. And the leftover 5 stays under the radical, giving you 60 root 5. So area just means you're going to be multiplying those together. Um, so hopefully that helps to kind of tie everything together. And there is an assignment posted on Canvas for you. Um, good luck. Thanks.